wait for some people to get on here first before I start reviewing here. Uh, appreciate if you guys would share this out. Um, I'm gonna get started here in a second. Uh, basically what I do is I review a uh, film a day for 365 days. I started January 1st and I've been doing that uh, ever since. So uh, yeah, no, no problem, Melanie. Thank you for following me. Uh, if you could share it out to your following, I really appreciate it. Uh, but basically you guys, so I, I, I just watch a film a day and review it here on Periscope and then I also upload it to YouTube. So uh, the film I'm reviewing today is Terminator Genesis. Uh, so I'll get into that in a moment, but uh, just so you guys kind of know exactly uh, what I'm doing ahead of time here. So really, really appreciate if you guys share this out. So uh, thank you for giving me the hearts and everything like that as well. Really, really, really appreciate it. So with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Sorry that these are, have been late lately. Uh, I'm going to start to get a little bit earlier with them. I apologize about that. But uh, so with that said, <laughs> I'm just going to get into it. So. Hey everybody, my name is Matthew Hollis. I'm reviewing 365 films, a film a day for an entire year. So today is day 12 and the film for today is Terminator Genesis. So basically Terminator Genesis is a lot like, uh, there. I mean, if I had to say it was like any of the other Terminator films, I'd say it's a lot like Salvation and even Terminator 3. Um, they really haven't been able to make one of these films great since uh, if James Cameron's not directing it, which he created Terminator, if he's not directing it, it's just normally really, really crappy. And it's just, this, this film I think is the worst because what happened in this film is not only did they decide to bring Arnold Schwarzenegger back, which is cool because obviously having Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film is a big deal uh, since he is the Terminator, but uh, Jay Courtney and uh, Amelia Clark the two people that that play the main people in this, Sarah Connor and uh, Kyle Reese, uh, they they are awful actors, man. I mean, uh, Amelia Amelia Clark is probably the worst actor on Game of Thrones. So when I heard that she was going to be in this, especially with Jay Courtney, I was like, this film is not going to be that great if like these are the caliber of actors they're shooting for. And I was one hundred percent right. The acting is really bad. The the Editing is bad. Um, the writing was just, I mean, atrocious. And obviously the Terminator movies have always had kind of like puns and stuff, and I understand that. Uh, even Terminator 2, and obviously more Terminator 2 than Terminator 1, but I feel like the issue with these films nowadays, and Jurassic World suffered from this huge, is that all these films that are based off of films from way back when um, are really just trying to bring back that nostalgia. They kind of like play up to that nostalgia over and over and over again. And it just, I don't know, it kind of upsets me. And, and the fact that they go ahead and do that and, and that's the main draw of the movie is like, hey, don't you want to see another Terminator movie? Don't you want to see another Jurassic Park movie? It's like, yeah, we want to see it, but we want to see something new, you know? And when you say even the line, there was a line in here where Arnold Schwarzenegger looks at the camera and goes, I'll be back. Like, why? Why? I understand. I'll be back is a huge quote from Terminator 2. But why? Why? There's no reason for you to do that. It's, it's, it's hearkening back to a great film, and then you have a film that's bad, and all that does is make it worse. You know, if the line was in there, and a film that did the, this really, really well uh, was Star Wars, the new Star Wars The Force Awakens, uh, that film had nods to the old films, but without being like, hey, look, it's the Millennium Falcon. Hey, look, it's this. Hey, look, it's Han Solo. It, they, they didn't do that. They were just part of the story, not like, they, they didn't bring it up on purpose type of deal. And that's what Terminator Genesis did. They did that multiple times, and I agree with you, Melanie. The villain is awful in this movie. To take pretty much John Connor, the main character, and make him the villain of Terminator, Genesis is, and by the way, the trailer for this film, the very first trailer that came out, and I'm a huge Terminator fan. Love Terminator 1, love Terminator 2. Terminator 3 is tolerable if, like, you're drunk enough. <laughs> but, uh, but the Terminator Salvation, and this Terminator especially, is the, this Terminator is the worst. And I thought Salvation, uh, you couldn't really get any worse than Salvation, because Salvation kind of was like, let's take this serious now. And Terminator obviously has some serious things about it, but it's really that fun action sci-fi movie as well. And uh, 
this film tried to be that and tried to be the serious film and tried to be all that and try to get the nostalgia and let me just say uh, one of the biggest draws of Terminator obviously is the time travel aspect of it and for this film to take time travel to such an extent where it almost like it's it's a crutch on the movie that's about time travel like the film is about a Terminator going into the past to eliminate John Connor and Sarah Connor so they can't stop Skynet that's the basic story basic premise makes total sense and now they're they're getting so convoluted that it's like a Terminator is going back to 2017 or back to this date or no now Skynet's coming out this date and now they're, they're also kind of trying to play into how social media works nowadays kind of calling Skynet as in like a Google would be like oh well now Genesis is going to come out and it's going to be on everything right and now Skynet will control everything and I didn't understand the premise that's the main premise of the movie is now there's this Genesis program and Skynet's adapting with time travel to do this and I know it sounds weird even when I'm saying it that's how stupid the plot of this movie is is it's so dumb that even me explaining it sounds dumb and so Skynet's going back into the past and then trying to eliminate Sarah Connor way back when when she was a little girl well then a Terminator goes back uh, the same Terminator that saved John Connor uh, that's played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, the nice Terminator. He goes back, saves Sarah Connor, and she grows up knowing about the Terminators, right? And so that's that's an interesting concept in itself, okay? So I can understand, understand Skynet goes back, figures out that they can't kill John Connor in the second one, and then now they're going to figure out how to just get rid of Sarah Connor in the first place. And... That makes sense, but then they go into this whole, no, now we're going to go into the future, now we're in 20, 2017, I believe is the date that they go to, where there's this Genesis program, which pretty much is uh, Skynet uh, all over again, and now the villain is, uh, you know, the main character, John Connor and all of our other ones. Skynet's now taking control of him and stuff like that, and, and I just think that that's stupid just in... I mean, there's many reasons that it's dumb, right? But uh, just to take John Connor as an iconic character in Terminator and make him the villain of the film without really understanding, like, okay, so the Skynet takes control of him, and I understand that, but um, he's the only one that survives, surprisingly. Every other person that gets taken over by this uh, Skynet virus dies, but, every, but he's the only one that lives, uh, coincidentally. But... Yeah, it just was really, really convoluted and stupid, and the acting, like I said, is really, really atrocious. The writing's really bad. They keep harkening back to those old old moments in the greatest Terminator movies. And I just, I just honestly, it was a waste of my time. I don't know why I decided to watch it. Uh, it, it I just was hoping, even after I saw all the bad reviews come out for it, I was just like, well, maybe there'll be, maybe it'll just be fun, you know? Maybe I can just get pizza and a beer and watch it, and it'll be okay. And I... I hated it every step of the way. There was times where I was even looking at my phone or like pausing the film to see how much longer I have left and that is awful when you're doing that. So when you're going, ugh, like I don't want to shut this off because it, it, it could change but then it doesn't and then you're like, well, I don't know why I wasted my time with it. So I appreciate you guys sharing this out. Sorry for another negative review. Uh, I saw somebody re at, uh, recommend Deer Hunter. If you guys ever want to recommend any films to me, you can recommend them to me on here, on Facebook, or anything like that. Uh, just search Matthew Hollis, or uh, it's facebook.com forward slash galv, G-H-A-L-V, and just share your movie recommendations with me. I have, obviously have to watch a ton of films still. I'm on day 12 only, so I got a ton of films left, so I really appreciate the films that you guys have recommended to me so far, and I uh, can't wait to watch more of them, so I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, and uh, have a wonderful and great night, you guys. Thank you.